tell you about my name here, Anthony Johnson, also known as Black Shine. I live here in Memphis, Tennessee, in Shelby County. I want to say thank you to everyone for all your support. Um, today is uh, Saturday evening, November 30th, 2013. Time is uh, 11:56 p.m. And I hope everyone, uh, hope everyone had, a, uh, hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving. And, uh, and as me, I you know, uh, enjoyed my Thanksgiving, the family and everything. Do you enjoy yours? You know. But yesterday, uh, today being Saturday, yesterday was Black Friday here in, in America. Uh, the day after Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving is uh, referred to as uh, Black Friday. Uh, the start of, uh, supposedly the start of the Christmas uh, buying season, uh, from what the commercials look. Before Thanksgiving, I was seeing commercials uh, talking about Christmas and, and things of this nature. And, uh, if I ain't mistaken, uh, uh, the only Thanksgiving commercial that I can remember uh, was one recently that I can remember. Kind of. There was some guy running behind a turkey. <laughs> and he thought he was going to catch the turkey and he ran into a tree. <laughs> so, no, that's the only uh, commercial I can think of for Thanksgiving. That I, can, uh, that I recall right now. But then, you know, uh, for the week, you know, I'm still working and not getting in any type of legal trouble. Uh, and say it's coming up to Christmas and everything. Looking forward to uh, 2014, like I say, uh, 2014, I'll be in the big screen, and uh, I want to thank everyone for their support, and uh, like I say, uh, you know, this past week was Thanksgiving, and uh, I have to thank you, hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving, I enjoyed my Thanksgiving, and uh, now, now the Black Friday's gone, uh, now it's uh, Christmas Eve is not about Black Friday, but the day after Thanksgiving, you know, it's going to be about the season of giving, you know, and I'm going to give it my uh, love and peace and hope, and uh, that's what we're going to continue, need to continue to uh, work on, you know, it was some news, some very positive news, that uh, took place this week. And, uh, uh, you know, here, here in America, this, this country has a, here in America, this nation does have a history of racial discrimination, racial prejudice, uh, racial uh, bias, uh, racial hatred toward African Americans, uh, Black Americans, Negroes, colored, or whatever word you want to use, uh, you want to use to uh, address the persons of African heritage and uh, the court system down in the state of Florida has um, made a decision. Everyone should be familiar with the court case down in Florida where the lady was uh, convicted in the Florida courtroom. Um, I think it's this law down in Florida called the Standing Ground Law. And this lady, um, she was a black woman. You know, she was convicted 
on the floor and put the uh, aggravated assault with a firearm. Yeah. Uh, aggravated assault with a firearm. Her lady's name is Marissa Alexander. Uh, she resides in the state of Florida. She was at incarcerated. She was convicted in court and was sentenced to 20 years in prison. And uh, she was supposedly married and being abused by her husband. And took a firearm and allegedly she uh, fired warning shot at a, at a piece of wood at her abusive husband. Like I said, she was convicted in the Florida courtroom and was uh, incarcerated and sent to prison. Uh, she served about three years, but this week, on uh, this Wednesday, by, uh, Wednesday, she was uh, released. She was released from the Florida prison. She was able to go home and spend, spend Thanksgiving with her family. Now, the court came and said uh, that the judge ordered a retrial. He released them, but he ordered a retrial. Finding that the jury instructions in the original trial were erroneous and, and unfairly put the burden of the burden on Ms. Alexander to prove that she had fired a shot in self-defense. Now, that's why uh, I have a problem with it. When you're the judge in the court case, when you go here and make a decision to release someone from the penitentiary, you know, from, from jail, prison, or whatever. And once you release that person, the evidence is still the same. There's no new evidence. There's, there's, it doesn't say nowhere that there's like some new evidence, like gunpowder or a new bullet or uh, they found a firearm or you know, they found a like, gunshot in the hood. You know, they found out that he was shot. And then, you know, something new. Not, there's no new evidence. It's the same evidence. So the prosecution, not just the defense. But the prosecution gonna have to come back on a retrial on the same evidence. That's a waste of taxpayer dollars. The judge has already said that has ordered a retrial. Now you order a retrial, there's some grounds that there has to be a retrial, either there's some new evidence or there's a, if there's no new evidence, then the judge has to find some errors in the case. So that means that the judge found errors in, in, in the court case. No new evidence. No new evidence. No no wounds on the husband. No uh no confessions from the guy she did say that she fired a warning shot. But that's already established in the court records. That a warning shot was fired and that she fired a warning shot in self defense because her husband was abused. That's another problem I have with this case. Is that the court has already established that this woman was being abused. Is in a court record that she said that she was being abused. Now, the judge said that the burden of proof was put on her to prove that she was being abused, but that's what the court was wrong. Because that's not only does the court of Santa Florida have a standing ground law. But by law, they're supposed to have laws in place for gun abuse. You know, women being abused, or men being abused, or children being abused. And they, so that's where a problem that I have with this court case is that there's no new evidence. And then uh, the defendant, Ms. Alexander, already stated that she did fire a shot. But yes, he was going to get a retrial. He was going to retrial no new evidence. So this, this, this is a waste of taxpayer dollars. This is a waste of taxpayer dollars. There's no reason for them to do it. A retrial. She released from prison. It was erroneous. And the place to 
brand of purple is because it always has out there to prove that she was a mule. That's another court tape. That's another court tape in itself. See, you're dealing with a court case where a lot of shots being fired. And then now you're going to have to deal with another court case where she is accusing a husband of abuse that was never brought to court. If, if you would never bring it to court, that her husband was abused and then she never filed charge against her husband. You don't have to file charge. In the first state, it does allow if that is a course of state of abuse. Okay. If you don't have you can if the court don't have uh, evidence of abuse, there's still a law in place for the court to uh, investigate the abuse claim that she's making. See, that's a whole other court case. That's another court case. That, that, that's a separate court case of uh, uh, spousal abuse. See, that's another court case where you're going to have to deal with the state of Florida. You might have to deal with that. Uh, so, the waste of taxpayer dollars being wasted trying to prove in an aggravated assault case dealing with a firearm, and then you might have to deal with spousal abuse. And, uh, the taxpayer dollars. You know, the reason why I'm saying that what we're potentially doing is it, it, it shows that the court historically has, con has discriminated, racially discriminated against blacks, African Americans, with, with tax with the taxes during the Jim Crow period, during the slavery, during the period of time after slavery when, when, uh, when blacks were paying taxes, those tax dollars were being used against the, the black and African-American African tax dollars then and now being used against the African-American black. And this is another case where the taxpayer dollars Black African Americans face is being used against the African American or black. And uh, this is something we're going to continue to have to uh, work to correct. Is that our tax dollars that we pay should not be used against us, but be used for us as a people. This, this jail, prison, jails and prison, incarceration is a tool that the white majority has used to oppress African American blacks. And this is another this is an example of the oppressive court system and the laws that the white majority claims are supposed to be. Pass to make our society safe. And, and, and when you say you're supposed to make it safe, that means that you do what was right. That means that the white majority was you do what was right. And that man had, had not been saved and not been proof that the white majority is doing what was right. And uh, it was it was related to this uh, case down in Florida. Uh, the case that's related to this is a uh, case down in Alabama, the state of Alabama, where nine African American boys at that time they knew they were. They were young, but uh, uh, Scotts boys, boys, down the state of Alabama. And uh, the state of Alabama had to uh, uh, correct the wrong in the record, in the court record. And, uh, uh, 
legislator after a legislator April, April the 4th of 2013. Nine black teens were falsely accused of rape by two white women and convicted by an all white jury. And all for once in time on their road. When they all were in the dream, the state of Alabama, state of Alabama posthumously, posthumously pardoned the Scarsborough boys. Posthumous means that after death, after they died, it was back in 19, in 1931. 